How is artificial intelligence transforming the effectiveness of IT departments? The big question, is there a way for businesses to gain from AI in terms of revenue, even as AI supports the well-being of staff? Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's Tech Voices, we're talking about those key issues with a major industry expert. With me is Fasil Masood, president of HP Digital Services. Fasil, really good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, James. So I think it's a sort of a tough issue. Uh, today's IT workers face a pretty heavy workload. I think you know some of them are doing what two and three people used to do. I don't often hear that there's there's more staff hired. So people are are stretched. I mean, how can artificial intelligence help lighten the load here? You know, it's it's a uh, there's many ways to look at this, but um, I would say any of those long tail tasks that most humans don't want to do. Mm -hmm. and they can be handled through automation, I would say the vast majority of people will say they would be delighted to take that off their plate so they can focus on things that are way more important, more strategic, and they can have the mental bandwidth to go attack those problems without being stretched with these other tasks. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. look at it from that perspective, I think there's, there's, there's uh, a lot of goodness there, but of course there's the other side too. Well, well, well what is the other side? Tell me about that. I think the other side is uh, Microsoft put out this list yesterday. I don't know if you got to see on X um, on the most threatened um, roles oh, yeah. in the world, etc. Right. And there was a pretty long list. I didn't get to see each one, but there's uh, obviously customer service goes to the top of the list, etc. And um, very understandable, right? Like a lot of this uh, automation and, and the early day algorithms of how to answer questions for customers were were born many years ago. But there's the other side, which is more like, well, is this threatening? the 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 livelihood of folks as right. it, as it emerges as uh, uh, the smartest way to do everything and mm -hmm. and I think we're pretty far from that but um, right now it's it's super helpful to have people have a lot more bandwidth to do things that are important. It almost conjures an image of staffers be they're they're managing the AI bots they're they're doing their old job and they're they're also managing the bots so they can extend themselves. I guess that's lightening the load. It feels like the jobs will certainly change. Yeah, I wrote about this recently, um, and I'll share it with you. But uh, oh, okay. this, this concept, this concept of um, AI in the loop, um, I recently wrote about the the concept of you know the framework of RACI, which is you know who gets in a large corporation, who gets to make the decision, and there's obviously the requester and the approver, et cetera, in the matrix, and assuming that AI is going to take over the entire process of from uh, thinking of a problem and all the way down to resolving the problem without having a human in the loop is it, is it feels like a bridge too far. Today. Right, right. So it's, it's almost the reverse where in the in the racy framework, you could have the inform and consult be the happy place for AI, where you don't really need uh, to have humans do that grunt work that could be generated through deep, deep, um, uh, research, et cetera, which you could find on any LLM. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like it's a good balance of having humans involved um, while really leveraging AI in the mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, let's talk about it from, from the business standpoint. I mean, what, what's the benefit for businesses for, for improving the daily workflow of today's digital staff? I mean, I think it's almost a clear question, but what, how, how can that be boosted? I think it's inevitable that businesses over time want to be leaner, more efficient, more streamlined, do more with less. Right. Right. We, we kind of know this. Yeah. Um, in e-commerce, we used to say nobody wants the highest price and the slowest delivery. Mm -hmm. No way. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the lowest price. So right. um, in that journey, if you map that journey, wherever um, businesses can find optimization, they're going to look for those optimizations in our space, for instance, and in the in the platform that I'm building, we want to reduce the workload of desk side support folks for the CIOs where why sure. are they filing tickets when these could be resolved before they were filed? Mm -hmm. Things like those are the optimizations you'll see, but I think it's it's moving pretty fast. Mm -hmm. You know, just my from my own personal experience, I will feed transcripts sometimes into like, you know, a, a, a chat bot and it'll, it'll go ahead and it'll, you know, put some beautiful bullet points together and then it'll say like, and when, what else can I do? And I realize, while well, the, the chatbot is certainly more, more helpful than the typical employee, not, not to throw shade at a typical employee, but the chatbot never gets tired. 
So it's sort of like it's it's the perfect employer. But sometimes I look at the notes and I go, huh, it just sounds like kind of a corporate speak there. It's not a lot of soul to that. So I guess that kind of goes both ways. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. You know, I was thinking about that the other day because the 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 service levels you get for a average customer mm -hmm. don't feel as excellent as a chatbot. However, yeah. if you are a loyal member of some club and you let's take a an airline and sure. you are the 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 titanium or diamond or whatever they call it. Yep. That human customer service is pretty spectacular. And they will ask you, what else can I do for you today? Uh -huh. Okay. So it's almost like the bar needs to be raised on, you know, everybody else as well. But because of these optimizations and let's get this call over with quickly, let's just get to the next call. And these SLAs that exist mm -hmm. where calls must be handled in this many seconds and resolved in this many seconds, et cetera, et cetera. The bots are the only path to any success there because... Mm -hmm. Expecting humans to go one call after another and have the same attitude all the way through, like, let's be realistic. Right. In the end, they're humans. Sure. Um, I think there's sort of an interesting, you know, question. We, we get into some subjective territory, but wh why is it important to create AI solutions to boost employee well-being? I don't necessarily think about that as, a, as an enormous business goal, though it, to a certain extent it might be. But what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, I'll give you our examples where we believe that we can boost um, employee experience uh, as the example I just gave, where take a traditional employee who joins a company brand new day one mm -hmm. and uh, has to onboard. And right out the gate in the first week, they're filing tickets on what's this, what's that, my machine, this, my software, that. AI is really good at pattern recognition. It's, it's seen these problems before. The data has been trained to know that if I spot this, then these are the different permutations to solve. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot more difficult for humans to do that type of stuff in that speed. The velocity and the quality that can be gained by using AI and resolving those things right. is the reason why one would rely on AI to do that. And I personally believe that that's, that is the happy place for AI. Give me tons of data that I recognize and I've been trained on, give, throw the problems at me, and I'll solve them. And that that's where I think um, that very defined task management of those issues AI is just superior. And that ultimately improves the employee experience. Well, I'm not having to file a ticket because AI just popped up on my screen and said, hey, Fassel, I just, there was a problem coming up. I took care of it, just FYI, versus I have to go through the, you know, ticketing process or whatever it is to talk to desk side because my browser's got a lot of latency. Why? Mm -hmm. So things like those, I think are just sort of no brainers, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also on the flip side of this, I think productivity wise, where if you're a CIO and you're procuring for 100,000 device fleet and you're trying to determine what am I going to spend here? What's the right thing to do? Who gets what? Well, yeah, I can do a lot of that for you based on the historical perspective of the users, users, right? The actual usage of the device, and also the cost that comes along with it. So not only do you gain time in making that decision faster, you also end up saving money, which I think in the end, the output is experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wish there was a, a better way to integrate the humans with the bots and that I was working with a, a software company the other, other week, I was trying to get some, uh, some customer support. And of course, it was throwing the bots at me. And it was, I understand they have to start with the bots. And my question wasn't that complicated, but the bots really were answering it. Because, so I, I wish there was this thing like, just pop me over to a human now. I've, I've gotten all the bot answers, like, you know, where are you located? I've gotten all those answers. It's not helping me. Could we talk to a human now? I, I, I uh, tend to agree with you. This is, a, this is a real problem for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's this oversubscription of, just throw a bot at it and figure it out. Well, the experience is not that good. Right. Um, it's not that different to when all of customer service was getting outsourced. It's not that different. Right. So if you think about it, if you sort of peel that's this problem, it's really the underlying thesis is how do we streamline the process and reduce the cost? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, that's what it feels like. But I do agree. There's no, there's no happy place today where you have a very specific question, you get it answered. Unless, like I said, if you're part of some loyal club where you've been very active, you are getting that support immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that. 
Well, let's look at the, the solution, the, the WXP solution, and I'll, I'll read the, yep. the caption. It's HP Workforce yep. Experience Platform WXP. It's an AI-powered solution designed to improve digital employee experience by maximum IT, maximizing IT efficiency and reducing costs. Now, that's a big job. How does it actually really work in, in the real world? Yeah, I mean, our, I'll break it down in a simple way. Our, our economic buyer of our platform is the, typically a CIO or an IT uh, administrator. Mm -hmm. They typically live with several problems that they have to deal with all the time. But the three big ones that kind of surface are, um, am I secure? Number one, are my devices secure? Right. Number two, can I continue to reduce cost and still provide the same level of service to my employees? Uh, and third is, can my, are my employees happy? Do I know if they're satisfied with what I'm doing? Uh -huh. okay. WXP addresses all three of those because we provide endpoint security through our uh, the module that's available within WXP uh, to secure your device at any point in time. It's embedded into the into the software. Mm -hmm. Second is we provide complete fleet management, so you know your entire fleet's health in real time at all times. You know the internet never sleeps, and neither does the cloud, and neither does AI. So we're able to detect and proactively fix those issues. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, just to get data from customers to uh, from end users to know how am I doing? How's my driving? And have a constant pulse on um, the employees. I think the platform provides the CIO with a holistic solution that gives them a complete 360 on how am I doing? Hmm. And they can solve the problem I mentioned earlier of the cost by reducing desk side support costs because autonomy kicks in. Mm -hmm. uh, and second, reducing the cost to purchase because if you're in finance and you need a basic machine, you don't need to be purchasing a machine every three years. Right. Why are you doing that? Um, so that's where we can be super helpful in just the hard cost savings that come along. And because we're HP, we tend to know a bit more about the hardware. Mm -hmm. But we serve every customer. We don't care if you're HP or if you're Apple. We're indifferent. We serve all OSs and all hardware. Well, I'm assuming it is it is customized to each customer or it doesn't work that way. How, how does the integration actually work? So uh, we sell what we call as a multi-tenant software, which means it's it's a piece of software that everybody gets to use. And you don't have to have this complex integration every single time. It's cloud native. Okay. So there's an agent that sits on your machine that basically deploys to the machine and then all the data is collected in the cloud. And then we provide a dashboard where the folks who are using for supplying their employees, the platform uh, can get a complete pulse on every single metric that's necessary to know how their entire organization is doing. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately, if you're a CIO, you don't want to be dealing with the long tail issues. So deployment is weeks, not months. Mm -hmm. um, visibility is incredible. You get to see, I mean, we, uh, I think we have like almost four and a half petabytes of data. So we're training that data all the time. Right. We're looking at incidents all the time. We're generating remediations all the time, millions of remediations. So that pattern recognition and the CIO knowing that we've got this covered is, is obviously of value to them. Mm -hmm. uh, who might be an ideal customer? Is it large enterprise or who's it geared for? Yeah, it's, it's, it's geared to uh, a bit of both. So our uh, core customer is uh, broken up in two pieces, which is one is the enterprise accounts that have very large fleets globally, mm -hmm. many countries, many languages, lots of localization, but they want to have the same level of experience for somebody sitting in Singapore versus somebody sitting in, I don't know, Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And the US. Right. right. So um, it's not easy to find a platform and the uh, a brand like ours that can serve all of that. Well, we've, we've got um, coverage, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and the, from an experience perspective, they don't want to have, you know, two different types of experiences. So we, we tend to provide um, the level of service that they expect at the end of the day from uh, from a platform like ours. Interesting, all right. Well, uh, the, the big picture is really interesting. Talk about the, the future, the future of IT, the IT department and AI. I mean, I, I think 
even you say like three years from now, it'll hardly look like what it looks today. It's very hard to predict where it's all going. I think there really is an unpredictable element uh, to it. But I still, FS, I'll ask you, wh wh where, where do you see it going? The future of, I of the IT department and AI, what, what's coming? Yeah, it depends on the two. I, and, I, and I just realized I didn't answer your second part of the question. We also sell into oh. distributors our, our channel. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, let's be clear. Like, this, this is part two. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, it's part two of we sell to the enterprise, but we also sell to all our channel partners. Uh huh. Okay. Who then, who then ultimately sell to SMBs and other companies? Okay. And they manage they manage their fleets. It's like a fleet of fleets. Uh huh. Um, to answer your question on where does where does this take you? Um, right. I mean, just look at the last two years. Look at the last two years. Um, we're still early innings, though. I will say this at the same time because there was a stat I saw yesterday that said, I want to say it was a big pub, but um, that only 30% of the people are actually using AI. I yeah, saw I saw that stat myself. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I, I wasn't I surprised because I think people are still grappling with it. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I look at when I see the usage of LLMs with my, with my sons, uh, I'm just mind blown at the amount of usage they're right. uh, doing versus me. <laughs> so it's just a bit of a generational divide, I guess. Like right. there's those who are using it for hours every day. Yeah, and there's others who are maybe using it for minutes. So I think early innings on that. Um, but when it comes to the uh, the speed at which this is going to take place, I think it just depends on the capacity of the organization's change. So mm -hmm. the thing I will say is that if you live on the X echo chamber, you think everybody's on AI and, right. and the world has passed you by if you haven't done it. Yep. However, in reality, enterprises typically trail startups by several years and sure. be able to implement that type of workflows and uh, agentic AI in the loop uh, processes, not, not trivial. No. Um, so, so I think everybody's exposed to AI. You use an Apple phone, like, you know, it's composing your uh, sentences for you in some cases, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So everyone's exposed to it. It's the amount of exposure, I would say, more adoption at the enterprise, but slower adoption at the enterprise versus what you would see in the startup world. Right. I, I think you made a good point about the agentic AI too. It seems like it's definitely the buzzword of 2025, but then yeah. just like the, the question that no one's talking about, it's not as big. It's like, how do we actually integrate these things into the, the existing systems? And that's confusing, cumbersome. And I think we're for feeling our way blind in that one. It's not trivial. And yeah. and to think that, I mean, agentic AI is just another wrapper word on top of bots. What's the difference? I, I guess, yeah. I mean, it, it maybe they're they're more uh, sophisticated, but the same idea, right? Same idea. And, and like anything else, um, it, it's obviously gained a lot of steam and, and for good reason, of course. Um, but I, I, I do think that assuming that all of a sudden that your entire, and we saw this with Klarna, they moved all their customer service to uh, AI and then they moved it back to humans mm -hmm. because, um, and at least that's what I read, uh, which is there has to be back to this racy concept that I talked about, which is it, it serves a lot. AI serves a lot of purposes, but it doesn't serve every single purpose. The human judgment is still needed in the loop. Right. So that, um, that verification layer, because um, the last thing I'll say to this is, um, uh, I don't know if you've read this book, Skin in the Game, but um, uh, it's a really good book. It, it talks about the uh, asymmetry of decision making, hmm. where if you don't have skin in the game, then typically, you know, you're not going to be invested in that that sure. decision. Right. And AI has no skin in the game. Hmm. What's 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 AI skin in the game? Right. None. So who has skin in the game? <laughs> we have skin in the game. Right. So Indeed, so the yeah. human the human in the loop with the AI is where I feel things will go. Mm -hmm. I think um, assuming that this is going to be 100% handoff three years, uh, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't see that, especially at the enterprise. So, no. Um, startups, time will tell. Sure. Hooray for humans. Um, Fassel, I think you said it. Really interesting. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Please come back and, and talk with us again sometime. Absolutely. Thank you.